My guest today is another one of our agents in our coaching program. She's, uh, she's doing great, great things. And with me today, I have Maria Scavelli. Maria, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's jump right into it because I want to kind of talk through some of the results you've been getting. And so um, we started working together, you just said kind of off air in October of 2020. Is that right? Yeah, I I started watching your YouTube videos probably a, at least a year ago. I have a very good friend who happens to be in your brokerage. And so she introduced me to some of your YouTube videos. And I started watching those about maybe a year ago, if not longer, and then um, heard about your coaching and decided to jump on board in October of 2020. Awesome. That's great. And so you tell us how long have you been in the business and in what market do you sell real estate in? So I sell real estate in the Salt Lake City market. And uh, I started, I, I will be an agent for a full three years this coming July. Okay, cool. And tell us, what is your goal for 2021 for closed transactions or listings taken? Um, listings taken would be 15. Awesome. And what is your average uh, listing price in Salt Lake? Oh my gosh, our prices are just well as everywhere in the country right now. Um, it's it's over four hundred now here, and so the average price home is over four hundred. Wow. Okay. So 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 fifteen. Because what's cool is we we're just again talking a little bit off air. We're shooting this in March, late March, twenty twenty one, and you've already closed six year to date. Is that right? Yes. So you're gonna. I mean. Based on that pace, if you keep going, I mean, you're going to do a lot more than 15, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I figured if I did 15, I would hit my goal of 150K um, with my probably with a couple of buyers thrown in there. So, yeah, um, but 15 minimum. Good, good for you. Good for you. So I want to kind of talk. I want to walk the audience through your story and how you're able to do what you're doing, because you're, you're building a successful real estate sales business. Uh, you've got a great mindset, great attitude. You're very much so into your health and fitness. And I want to talk through all of that. So before we met, you know, and you were in the business for probably two and a half years or uh, before we met, what was, how did you approach getting new business or generating new leads as a real estate agent? Well, when I first started in the business, Brandon, I, I had over 20, well, I'm dating myself here, but I had over 25 years of sales marketing and negotiating experience with various sales companies I've worked with. Um, I've done a lot of in-home sales, over-the-phone sales. So I had that experience, but I didn't have any experience in real estate. So I decided to, when I first became a realtor, I felt that the best decision for me in order to learn the real estate business was to join a team. Um, so I joined a team with a big box brokerage at that point, And I was with them for about six months before I went to an independent brokerage. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. And so what was it that, because you were watching some of my videos on YouTube, Mm -hmm. What was it that uh, that you heard or you saw or, or about my message that maybe attracted you to want to work with me in the first place? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, sure. So I resonated immediately with the way you you speak to people. Um, I felt having I'm, I'm not saying I'm like this amazing salesperson or anything, but with the amount of sales experience I have when I when I went to work for that big box brokerage, I won't mention any names because their training is amazing. Um, it really is, especially if you're new to sales, but I wasn't. And um, the scripts sounded like that. They sounded like scripts. They didn't sound authentic. I didn't feel like I was being Maria. I felt like I was being somebody different. And I would even have, I, I was saying these words and in doing these things and talking to potential clients knowing I didn't sound authentic. And that's exactly what I was getting back. You know what? You're the 50th person that's called me. You guys all sound the same. And I was like, yeah, I think of myself. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I, yeah, no, yeah. I agree with you hundred percent. And so when I, to answer your question, when I started listening to your videos, 
the way you speak to people resonated with me a hundred percent. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy, he does exactly what I thought I should be doing the whole time, but I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it. I didn't know what my voice inflection should be. And then once I learned the wording that you use and how you speak to people and how you, you do come across genuine, you do come across authentic and it's not an act. You're really being yourself. I just started implementing what you were teaching. I just, I, I literally pretend like when I'm on, when I'm on the phone or when I'm in a, a listing appointment or a a preview. I do mostly previews right now. I'm trying to transition. But when I'm with a client, whether on the phone or in person, I pretend like I'm a female version of Brandon. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so cool. I well, do. And I, and I remember too, right when you first started, I knew because, and, I, and I've given you this feedback before, like your confidence and, um, and your skills are really going to serve you now that you kind of learn this new method. Uh, that's why I'm so excited for you. So let's kind of break that down a little bit because in your first 30 days, I wrote down the numbers. It was great. So, so your first 30 days in our coaching program, you spoke to, well, let me just verify. This was just Fizbo's, right? Were you working any other sources of business or is just for no, sale? No, actually, I'm just now trying to get into venturing out into different um, lead sources Okay. up until about a week ago, even I was just solely focused on Fizbo's. Okay. So are all your listings so far in 2021, they're all for sale by owner so far? Um, every one of them, except one was a repeat client, um, awesome. who happened to be a, um, a non, excuse me, what do you call it? Um, she's, she, she owns the property, but she's renting it. Oh, she's like an absentee owner or she's Correct. like, a yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Good for you. Yeah. So, so your first 30 days, uh, you know, was, this is great. This is going to give the audience a lot of context, a lot of value. You spoke to 209 for sale by owners. You set 44 FISBO preview appointments, which is a 20% conversion, which is exactly where we want you to be. And you met with 30 of those for sale by owners, which is 70% kept ratio. Now, for most real estate agents, Maria, that want to go out there and start working the for sale by owner market to get listings, they're intimidated. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to approach them. Let's first talk about how you structure your day because you're essentially having like 10 for sale by owner conversations per day, which takes you on average about an hour, would you say, of outbound prospecting? Is that fair? Yeah, I'm gener I'd say an average of an hour. All right, cool. Now, so, so everybody listen to that. We're only talking about an hour so far of, of real, you know, sales work. In that hour, you're having 10 conversations with for sale by owners. Let's talk about the conversation. To your point earlier, what a lot of other companies and other people in our industry want us to do is not be authentic, not be ourselves, pressure them and use some like awkward high pressure sales scripts what have you learned through working with me that makes these conversations different in your opinion? Um, what I'm learning through what you've taught me, Brandon, is I practically fall off my chair every single time when I say something to them and they respond exactly the, with the way I want them to. Yeah. Um, I'm finding that because I preface the conversation completely different than what I used to, People are more open to listening to me. They, their defenses come down immediately. They start opening up to me on the phone. Like I'm a friend. They start actually, it, it turns into what would have been a script turns into a real conversation about their home. And by the end of the call, I I'm getting their email address to, you know, get them set up on our system and everything. And and getting them set up on a uh, preview appointment, which, you know, I know that's something that people that are listening don't understand the difference between a preview and a listing appointment. I'm still doing preview appointments. I'm you know, trying to transition into getting those listing appointments. But hey, Maria, anyway, so your yes. video just your video just went off. I can hear you, but your video just shut off. Did your phone just kind of. Uh... Oh, somebody's somebody's trying to call me. Oh, that's how it works. You know, it's so funny. 
so sorry. Okay, oh, that's what no. happens after eight o'clock. Everybody starts calling. Okay, starts so calling. Yeah. Um, what I did was I what I've noticed is um, when I'm talking to someone on the phone, basically they are it is turning. It's not a script. It's actually it turns into a conversation because the way I'm prefacing the phone call from the very beginning it does something to their brain to where they just immediately trust me and they, they can feel that I'm not like all the other agents. Yeah. So it makes total sense. And so if we break that down a little bit further, what you're saying and what you learned how to do was, and what we teach our, our, our agents to do is not on the first call, try to like talk them out of being a FISBO and listing because Here's the biggest mistake that I think agents make is that they think that they can come up with some type of magic script to convince the for sale by owner on the very first conversation that everything they believe up into this point is going to change with a magic script. And what you're suggesting is that when we change the framework of the conversation, because you and I both know the likelihood of a for sale by owner listing with an agent doesn't happen on the first day. It happens over time. Would you agree with that? Yes. Now, with that being said, what you've now learned to do is position that first conversation to your point in a way that allows you to go and get that face-to-face -face appointment to open up the relationship. So Correct. you're doing a great job on the first call. Now let's talk about you set, you're setting a lot of appointments. Would you agree that, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is it easy for you now to set a for sale by owner preview appointment almost every day? Is that easy yeah. if you wanted to? I would say I can, I can set one practically every day, if not more, um, one or two. That, that's phenomenal. And, yeah. and we're going to come back to, um, thank you. My daughter just brought me some Starbucks. You got to love that. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> I know. So, so we're going to talk about a different strategy that you're transitioning to in a second, but I want to stay on this path. So okay. you're setting a for sale by, uh, for sale by owner appointment almost every day. You go to the preview appointment. Can you walk us through your strategy, what your thought process is there, your mindset with connecting with, with the consumer and, and give us a high level understanding of what you're doing on these FISBO appointments? Um, on my FISBO appointments, I would say, first of all, I'm going in with a mindset of being in service and helping that person. And um, I'm not there to argue with them and tell them all the reasons why they're not going to sell their house on their own. Um, I'm coming across in a way to where, hey, I completely respect your decision to sell for sale by owner in this market. If I were you, I would be doing the same exact thing. In fact, don't let a listing agent tell you that you can't do this. When I say that, guards come down 100%. They are my best friend. Now, so let's talk about this, Maria, because I love this. Well said. When most real estate agents that don't know our system hear that for the first time, they're going to fall out of their seat because they always tell me, Maria, over the last five or six years that I've been training this system, they're like, you say what? You're going to, why would you say that? Because what, what someone doesn't understand is, remember, the chances of a for sale by owner listing their house with a realtor takes time and they have to experience it on their own before they're even open to having that conversation. So what we're saying, what we're suggesting is, hey, go try this thing on your own. Only when the day comes where you have found out that your tactics, your strategies, your approach isn't working, we position ourselves then and only then to be their backup strategy. Is that is that right? Yes. Yeah. So that's the part that people don't understand because what all these other companies again are teaching is on the first call, close, 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 convince, 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 go to the appointment, convince, convince, convince. They get a bunch of rejection, which then turns the realtor off from working FISBOs altogether. So you go and have this great conversation. I believe that face-to-face -face appointment is the beginning of the relationship. Do you agree? Yes. And so you go and have that appointment, you leave, what do you do next in order to convert them into a listing long-term? 
Well, I have a, a I, I invested in a buyer, like a buyer type system last year um, where I post my listings. And then when I get leads, those leads go into this database. Yes. Um, so I have, I probably accumulated like, let's say 2000 buyers into this database that I have. And I do offer them a service of posting their listing or their property to my database. Love it. To get out to my buyers. And so I offer that to them as a free service. And I tell them, listen, I can't promise you anything, but you know, if I happen to get a phone call when I post this, cause it's going to go to about 2000 people, I will give you a call. We'll set up a showing. How does that sound? Great. And then I'll also set them up on a, um, a market report so they know what's going on in the neighborhood. There's there's a strategy that we use throughout the week to keep in touch with that person. Yep. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but- No, it's perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. So what I find is when I'm doing these things, it's building, it's building that confidence in them that what I'm telling them I'm going to do, I'm following through on. Now that, oh, you just gave me goosebumps because here's the thing. When we leave the face-to-face -face appointment, if we do that preview appointment correctly, we make a lasting impression, which in my, uh, from my standpoint, Maria, I believe that's the start of the interview process. That whole time where you're following up with them, you're providing them value, you're emailing them the, the neighborhood market report once a week. You're touching base with them on a follow-up phone call once a week. Maybe you're using some direct mail. You're using your buyer database. You're doing all of these things, to your point, serving the for sale by owner, almost acting as their agent before you're their agent because they get to experience what it's like to work with Maria before they've hired Maria. And isn't that the point? Yes, definitely. So, so yeah. what happens over time is you do this for a couple of weeks. And if the for sale by owner has troubles, frustrations, they, they just give up essentially at that point in time, a lot of the time Maria becomes the obvious choice. And is that how you're getting your listing opportunities? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the last one I got, which was, um, I, I was, I just got goosebumps when I got this, I got this text message early Saturday morning. And what's really funny is I didn't even meet with the wife. I set the appointment with the wife. She's really busy. She's, she's a judge and her husband works from home. So she set the preview appointment up for her husband to be there for me. So I was kind of bummed thinking, oh, I'm not going to get to meet with both of them. Yeah. But um, I get this text message from her Saturday morning telling me that they've had at least 50 agents call them, if not more and how frustrated she was and how unprofessional and how rude and how she had to literally hang up on four of them. And she said, you know, my husband is not easily impressed, but could you please come over Saturday morning and talk to us about the possibility of getting the house on the market? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I, will, I was so thrilled. I thought that's when I was like, well, and that's when I posted. And I was like, you know, it doesn't work every time, but if you're consistent, if one of your students, if your students are consistent with what you teach, it's not going to work every time and for every person. But when something like that happens, it makes up for the five or six or 10 people that it didn't work with. Yeah, because that's such a good point, because you're, it doesn't work everywhere. We're, 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 it doesn't work every time. We're talking about a conversion ratio. And so you have to be consistent in order to get a conversion, an average conversion ratio. And in our training program, I talk about uh, the game roulette at casinos. It's, you don't sit at the, you don't, have you ever played roulette? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I was so, actually, I, play, I played once and I kept winning. There you go. Look at you. <laughs> so, so just like the game of roulette, just to put this into context for what you're talking about, the, when they spin the, the wheel with the ball, it doesn't hit black every single time. It doesn't right. hit red every single time. There's an average. It's actually 47.5% on average. And the way we get averages is by a consistent behavior, consistent activity. Just like now you're working on your, your, your health and fitness. You didn't work out once to look the way you do now, did you? No, it's my, my thing is 
it's to, totally other sub to, other subjects, but it's like, I teach more nutrition because yes. I can go to the gym seven days a week. And if I'm not putting the right foods in my body, I'm kind of wasting my time. That's right. So yeah, it was consistent, consistent, consistent. But after 12 weeks of being consistent, I had got on the scale and had lost 23 pounds. That's exactly right. And yeah. again, talking about real estate sales and health and fitness, you've, even if you talk about nutrition, you don't just eat one healthy meal and drop 23 pounds. No, no, no. It has right. to tap over time. So that's the thing most agents have a tough time with, Maria, is they want to call one for sale by owner once. They want to meet with that for sale by owner once. They want to get the listing at one meeting and then get paid right on the spot. That's not how real estate works, is it? I'd be retired right now if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what advice would you give to real estate agents that are struggling to grow their business because of what we're talking about? Because they're so addicted to instant gratification. They don't understand follow-up and playing the long game. What advice would you give to, a, to, to an agent that wants to start working for sale by owners? Well, it is consistency. And I will say this, although I have years and years and years of telephone sales experience, yep. I get call reluctance almost every day. I yep. have to, it is a mindset. And I, at eight o'clock, I'm on the phone. And until I've called all my leads, I don't get out of my chair. And is it easy to do that? No, but once I've done it, that's where I get my gratification. That's where your self-confidence starts to grow is from doing the work. I get scared to get on the phone every single morning. You know, that's so cool you said that because here's the reality. I don't so, know why, but I do. <laughs> so, so, so do I. That's the thing is I think most people look at successful agents that are building a business through outbound prospecting is like, oh, they must, they, they must be special. You know, God gave them, you know, this. No, 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 no. They, we don't like, we, we hate prospecting just as much as everybody else. Difference is we do it anyways. Like right. you hate working out and eating healthy as much as anybody else. You do it anyways. And so that's the difference between winning and losing. And right. the key is it's always uncomfortable, but to your point, after you've essentially faced yourself, faced your dark side that we talk about, mm -hmm. that's the self-confidence that you're talking about to say, listen, my dark side doesn't want me to do this. My ambition side, my good side says, no, you got to do the work. And once you do the work, you, you kind of beat the dark side down. Would you agree? Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, also, I believe you have to have a really strong why whether it's with real estate or getting in shape, whatever you're trying to achieve, your why has to make you cry. Yeah, I love it. We say that with nutrition and with the company that I do nutrition through. Um, you have to have a really strong why, because if you don't, you're not, you're not going to have a reason to get on the phone. You're not going to have a reason to make those calls. Um, I'm a single mom. I don't have anyone. This is it. Yeah, it's my backs up against the wall. And that's kind of like when people say, why did you get into real estate? Well, it's like, my back was up against a wall. I really didn't have, I mean, I guess I had a choice. Um, but I have bills to pay. I have a daughter to put through school. I've got, you know, responsibilities like anyone else. And I want to have a great life. And um, I think when you can really distinguish what that why is, have those goals in front of you, like you have us do a vision board, um, you know, to have in front of us and, and, and write out where we want to be, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, really have that in front of you. Um, <clears throat> all of those things can really help to propel you forward. Because if I didn't have those things to look at, I could easily in the morning say, ah, eh, forget it. I'm not going to make my calls today. 100% spot on. If your why is not strong enough, to your point, the first time you get into some pain, the first time you start getting some object, some, some rejection on the phone, you're done. You're not going to do anything. And that's why it's so funny. That's why I love this book, Start With Why by oh, Simon cool. Sinek. And he talks all about this in his book. And Maria, it's a great book if you haven't got it so far. Um, I'm writing it down now. Yeah. And he talks about this in the entire audiobook or physical, whatever book you get. Uh, 
Maria, that's such great advice. If you don't have a strong why, you're simply not going to do the work. Whether that be health, fitness, finances, business, sales, doesn't matter. If, if you're not doing it for, for a specific reason, you're just not going to do it, period. So mm -hmm. let's transition, talk about the new strategy that you're, you're focused on now. So we, in our program, call it our 2.0 strategy. It's how to have conversations with, with a lead in a way that positions you to get a listing opportunity faster with, uh, at the same point, not making mm -hmm. the prospect feel threatened. So let's talk about um, how long have you been, been trying this new strategy? Well, I've been trying that new strategy for several weeks. <clears throat> I find, I don't know if I just have, again, it's that fear of asking that next question. Yeah. Um, I have done it a couple times. I'm just not, that's the thing. I'm, I haven't been consistent with asking, going that one next step. I've done it. And what's funny is the first time you told me to do it, I did it and I got the preview appointment, which, and he said, no, I'm not ready. And when I asked him on the phone, he said, no, I, I do want to try selling it on my own first. And I said, not a problem. So it turned into a preview appointment, but he ended up listing with me. That's great. That's so yeah. good. So, so what we're talking about, just so for people who are watching to say, well, what are you guys really talking about? What we're talking about is when we're talking with a for sale by owner and we ask a question that sounds something like this, and I would say, Maria, hey, you know, um, out of much respect for you, I believe you can sell this property on your own. I mean, the market in Salt Lake City is amazing. I'm curious if in 30 days, for whatever reason, you can't, at that point, potentially, would you be open to having a conversation with me about my for sale by owner backup plan? Now, if Maria says yes to that question, this is what we're, so I'm going to give you some training right now too, Maria, this will be good. Okay. So if, if you say yes to that, yeah, Brandon, listen, if we can't sell on our own, we'd be open to that. What we then turn around and say, okay, great. Well, let's not agree to anything right now. I'm going to email you, Maria, what my plan looks like. I'll get you a copy of my resume, review the plan. And if it's something you want to review with me in the future, I'd be happy to do so. Fair enough. Maria says, yep, that's totally cool. I get your email. I send you, and I'm going to send you the email. Now, when we're still on the phone, here's where the magic happens. So I'm going to say things like, well, Maria, while I've got you on the phone, and maybe this is, you know, maybe this is a long shot, but I'm just curious, you know, if I could share this plan with you now, I could stop by one day this week, share this plan with you now, break down the numbers, and if it made sense, is this something you would consider? Because listen, you're not going to do anything unless it made sense. Am I right? Right. So let's, I guess, why don't we do this? Why don't we just schedule some time to get together maybe on Wednesday or Thursday? I'll walk you through the plan. You can see what it looks like. And then you can decide, Maria, if this is something you want to take advantage of now, or if it might make sense at some point in the future. Does that seem reasonable? Sure. Right. So um, that's kind of what that strategy sounds like at the end of the call after we've generated the lead. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so that's what you're trying. I love it. So, so with that strategy moving forward, um, you know, we talked a lot about your why and your goals. You know, I know you mentioned this earlier in the interview. One hundred fifty thousand this year is your goal. Will that be your biggest year in real estate sales, income wise? Oh, definitely. As a matter of fact, um, I'm so thrilled. I wrote out these numbers before we got on our call. <clears throat> and I just wanted to share that Please. when I started with you in October, I didn't really start. I didn't even start making my calls because I had an out of town guest that month, but I spent a lot of time on my couch <laughs> writing out my scripts. Um, so I actually didn't start making my calls until probably the first or second week of November, 2020. Um, I had my first closing the week of Christmas. So since that first closing, I have generated more in commission by April 16th than I did my very first whole year in real estate. Wow. That is incredible. More so in four months than in one year. Mm. That is so cool. You just gave me goose. I mean, that's, that, 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 that is amazing, Maria. And thank I mean, you for big, sharing that. 
Thank you. A big, a big part of that is I did move from a big box brokerage where I did give away a lot of my commissions and, and it worked out because I got great training and knowledge and everything. And now I'm with an independent brokerage where I, you know, have my own commission strategy. I've been able to work through your program and, yeah. you know, it's, it's great. So I'm able to generate a lot more per, per sale, right. but still, I mean, to be able to make literally $8,000 more in four months than I did my first entire year is huge. It's amazing. So that's that's really cool. So let me ask you, I mean, so 150 in 2021, if you continue to be consistent, continue working on your skill set, where mm-hmm. do you see yourself going in the next three to five years with your real estate sales business? Well, would you, do, I was thinking maybe Brookstone could open up a brokerage here and we could partner up or something. That's right. I love it. I love <laughs> where your head's at because we have big goals to expand across the country and Salt Lake keeps calling our name for a lot of different reasons. But um, I mean, you know, 15 deals. I, I really believe that if you and I did this interview in December 2021, that you are going to be way past 15. I mean, what does your pipeline look like right now? Do you feel like, cause you got six already closed. We're, we're not even into April yet. I mean, you're in the first quarter you did six, right? So if you did that the next three quarters, that's 24 deals, which then goes to over 200,000 in income. Is that right? Yes. So, I mean, do you feel like you've got a nice healthy pipeline that can get you to what we're talking about? Um, I have, I have a number of buyers. The, it's been, which you guys probably experienced yeah. too. I mean, with the multiple offer situation, I've got people that are well qualified, but are not getting these houses. So I have a, a number of buyers, but as far as um, listings, I'm, I'm really trying to fill my pipeline right now. So that's great. And, and yeah. remind me again. So you're the sources of business. What, what uh, lead generation sources are you working right now? Um, right now I'm just working FISBOs and I started getting into expireds and for rent by owners. I love it. I love it. Cool. I love it. So any last words of, of inspiration, because so many agents, they love these interviews because they like seeing people. They like hearing the stories, any last words of inspiration for someone who's just really struggling. They're, they're really, you know, looking in the mirror saying, I don't know if I can do this. Any last words of inspiration? Well, it's funny that you, I have to say this, um, even with the success I've experienced, I still feel like it's not, it's not enough. I want more, you know, and I feel like I'm failing half the time, you know? So my, my answer to that is, and I was telling uh, my friend, Susan, who's part of your brokerage, I said, the thing I love about Brandon's training is that we meet, you know, what, twice a week. Yep. And, um, whenever I feel like I'm failing in a certain area of my business, the fact that I'm able to be part of a community of people that are doing the same things every day that I'm doing. And I get to hear that, not that I want to see other people struggle, you know, but when I hear somebody else's struggles and then I can go, Oh, you know, I'm not the only one that's experiencing this. Yeah. And it inspires me to want to continue because it's like, it's not me. It's just, this is the industry we're in. This is what we're up against. And Brandon's giving us the tools in order to be successful. Um, and as that, as the industry is changing, you're right there with new strategies and new ideas and new concepts. And um, just being, being part, I would say if you're struggling um, first of all, make sure you're with the right people. Make sure you're in with the right group of people that ins- that don't just inspire you, but you really resonate with that group of people or those mentors. If you don't get out and find something that does work for you, because that will start weighing on your self-esteem and your self-confidence and everything. Um, So for me, it's just being consistent, but also trying to tie in as much as I possibly can with your group and with your training so that I don't fall off track. Because even having success, I could easily fall off track next week and fall into a negative mindset. So I think it's really important to stay connected. 
Great advice. I love that, Maria. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, that was great, great advice. And so thank you for, for doing this. I mean, when we when we post this replay out on YouTube, you're going to inspire so many real estate agents. And so if they want to connect with you or just kind of pick your brain, can they connect with you on Instagram or Facebook or where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a Facebook business page as well as Instagram. It's just simply sold Utah Realtor is my handle. Um, my email address is Maria simply sells at gmail.com. Cool. And we'll link all of Maria's stuff uh, in the show notes in the description beneath this video. So Maria, thank you so much. I'm excited to be by your side and continue to help you build this business. And maybe we'll do this in 12 months from now and share with the audience where you're at in 2021. And uh, I'll look forward to, to that day. But thank you so much for, for doing this with me today. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And thanks for your training. It's been awesome. I recommend it to everybody and anybody out there that wants to have a successful real estate business. I love it. I appreciate your support. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds great. See you, Maria.